from AATH, the Association for Applied and Therapeutic Humor. This is LaughBox, the podcast for laughter and humor professionals. Here's your host, Chip Lutz. Well, hey, here we are. Uh, the preface to my interview with Yakov Smirnoff for our podcast on ATH Life Box. But before we got into that, I thought it would be super awesome to talk to the conference chair to talk about all the fantastic stuff, that's a technical term, stuff, that she's been working on and the team's been working on in order, you know, to make this conference absolutely fantastic. And just the fact that Yakov, because Yakov's going to be there. I mean, huge, huge fan. And you'll see in the interview when I talked to him, it was I was a tad nervous. However, I'm talking to Dr. Heidi Hanna, New York Times bestselling author and my personal friend, even though she won't always admit it. And she's actually got me marked as spam in her email, which is kind of sad. But um, I'm going to talk to her a little bit today about the conference. So, hey, Dr. Hannah, how are you? Hey, you're not nervous at all to talk to me. I'm, I'm old news now. Not really old news. You're just my, my old bud. So I'm really, I, I, I'm, when I was looking at the schedule for the conference, I am super stoked about this conference. I mean, yeah. every conference is usually really good, but this one is just kind of like, gonna, like, I'm looking forward to it and I know it's going to blow my mind. So what are some of the things we can expect at the yeah. conference this year? Well, I, I'm thrilled about the, the lineup that we have. And I, I feel a little bit bad as you're kind of teeing up Yakov. I'm like, oh my gosh, people are thinking, oh, we have to listen to Heidi first. But let me just tell you, Yakov being part of our conference and being part of this conversation. I mean, you and I have both had a chance to chat with him now. Um, one of my favorite things about him being involved is that he is part of our tribe. Like he's so excited to get to know everybody and actually learn alongside uh, of us. So initially it was kind of like, well, I'm going to come speak and, you know, I don't really need a room. I won't be there that long. And you know, the more we talked about what we're doing, he's just been investing more and more in learning about us. And he really has started to look at uh, the research behind humor. And he's taking his work into a whole new space. And I, I won't go into all the details about him, but that just kind of helped set the tone, I think, for the type of conference that we wanted to put together this year. So we knew pretty early on we had a chance to get him involved. And in order to kind of step our game up a little bit, get more people involved in the community and actually do some service to the community, kind of showing people who we are and what we're all about, um, we're actually going to be having this Comedy for Caregivers event that Yakov is going to be one of the speakers for, but we have some other amazing speakers who are going to be part of that as well. And that's going to be Friday night, um, which is April 13th. And what we're going to do for that event in particular is it's still going to give attendees at the conference their continuing education credits. You're still going to be learning. We're still going to be talking about the benefits of applied humor, but we're also going to be inviting 250 people from the community to join us. And these are going to be people who've been selected by different organizations because they're actively caregiving in some way. So we have first responders coming. We have people who have family members they're caring for with Alzheimer's. We have healthcare practitioners. So we just really wanted to give people a sense of who we are, give them a chance to learn. And these are going to be people who may not be able to attend the whole conference, but they're going to still get to come hang out with us and learn and laugh together on that Friday night event. So that's just one of the things that we're doing. That's pretty, that's, that's pretty cool. Cause I know that from a care, caregiver standpoint, sometimes, I mean, that is just as hard as going through something yourself. I mean, it's just as stressful. You're trying to for balance sure. everything in your life. So what an amazing opportunity for people to not only learn about AATH, but just kind of have a little bit of humor relief in their every, every day mayhem of doing what they do. Yeah, you know, I, I think back to my first conference, and it was actually in San Diego because I didn't want to have to go very far, so that tells you a lot about me, um, but it was like a block from my condo, and, you know, I walked down there, but the thing that touched me the most was watching the service. You know, we had, I think, Danny Donuts had a, a big crew of people who were out in the streets like doing some humor. We had therapeutic clowns going into hospitals. And it just, you know, as an outsider at the time, it was so touching for me to see these people who weren't just about telling jokes and, and, you know, the benefit of comedy and kind of that relief that we get, but they were actually serving people in need. 
performing in different ways, having different types of conversations, you know, so I think it just goes so far beyond what we tend to think about when we think about laughter and humor. And that piece of service is something I've seen with all the members of AATH doing on their own. But then if you get us together collectively and we can share that and create those relationships with people in the community, I just think it gives us an even better chance to share the message of AATH. And then around that, you know, I learned from a great, great man once named Chip Lutz. He said, when you're putting a conference together, it's got to be, I think it was a little country, a little rock and roll, a little Donnie the, and Marie thing the happening Donnie, there, right? Donnie and Marie model. The Donnie, you cannot go wrong with the Donnie and Marie model. You can't. You can't. And so for those of you who haven't heard Chip tell this story a million times, uh, what we're looking at here is some play, some fun, some humor, some, you know, practical application, but we also have some rock star researchers. So uh, one of my very dear friends, Dr. Srini Pillay, is a researcher, a neuroscientist at Harvard. He's going to come talk to us about what happens with the unfocused mind and how important that is for our brain power. I know I just totally went over your head with that, Chip, but you know, hang in there with me. We've got uh, I was still, I, you're, You were, I was actually still thinking about Donnie Marie. You're right. You, you took a nap for ahead. a second, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> we have Willie Rutsch, who won the Lifetime Achievement Award for AATH last year. He's going to be coming over from Europe and, and talking about research. And then, you know, we've got some really motivational, touching, inspiring stories. Uh, a friend of mine, a uh, challenged athlete named Sean Simonson is going to be talking about his story. He was in a bicycle accident and uh, became quadriplegic and, you know, now is this amazing athlete and a hand cyclist. And he's going to be there talking to us about how he uses humor actually in communicating with people who may feel uneasy, you know, about, uh, about approaching him about his disability. And he wants to talk to people. So how he uses humor in a way that's really practical. Um, so, you know, even our breakouts, honestly, we had I think just under a hundred submissions this year for breakouts wow. and our breakouts are keynote quality. I mean, it was so hard to say no. We have, you know, people, professional speakers who we, we had to turn down just the caliber of what we got. And the theme is resilience. Um, so, you know, we we're really looking for sessions that we're going to talk about how to use humor in resilience. Um, but not just resilience the way we think about also even things like, you know, sustainability in business. And, you know, we we'll talk about resilience when it comes to our health and how we deal with stress. Um, but I, I feel like you know, we've got we've got a great session on resilient students. There's all these things that are popping into my head. So it's going to be tough. I'll tell you the most stressful thing I think about this year is going to be picking which sessions to go to. But we are also working on, fingers crossed, we get a little bit of sponsorship dough to help us with this. We're also working on uh, potentially recording and maybe even live streaming a session or two so people can um, attend some of the sessions or watch some of the sessions they missed because it's just going to be, it's going to be really incredible. And well, it's in San Diego, wait. so, you know, well, pretty much I, guaranteed some good weather. Yeah, I'm not, I'm l less excited about San Diego. I'm just more excited about resilience. So, okay, I actually am excited about San Diego because I like San Diego really well. I just <laughs> want to kind of like, you know, promote the conference a little more. Uh, I personally, I, uh, I appreciate taking a little time to share a little bit of, of what's going on with the conference because I know that everybody, uh, you included, have been working really hard on making this the best possible conference and i can't personally i can't wait i'm so excited about going to this conference not just here yakov but just here everything everybody else that's in the lineup there i know that i'm going to leave with a lot more yeah. a lot more you know a lot more tools in my toolbox to actually use humor in my everyday life i mean you know theory is nice but application is what works and that's what we're really about. Yeah, is. and you know, we're going to we're gonna set the tone with this year a little bit different too. And I just want to add this for people who maybe are new and don't know, because I think sometimes we get right into kind of the heavy content. We forget a lot of people don't know what applied and therapeutic humor is. So we're actually going to set the tone. We're going to have workbooks that people can work through. So by the time you leave, you actually have a really clear idea of how you're going to implement some of this stuff. So it's not like going to a conference and getting overwhelmed with all of this great new information, but actually personalizing it and saying, here's what I'm going to do different when I leave. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's going to be a great time. We're going to be practicing things on Sunday morning before we finish. We're going to have a super experiential session where you're going to get a chance to experience whether it's laughter yoga or some other sort of kind of application. And the last thing I'll throw in, we're like a mile from the airport. 
So you can basically walk from the airport, easy transportation, and lots of great stuff to do in the area if you want to spend a little extra time in San Diego and recharge before you get back to work. You don't even need an Uber. You can, like you said, you can just walk. That's right. You can. You That's might roll. You might be able to roll. Yeah. Well, the way I've been, the way I've been eating, <laughs> that is a distinct possibility. <laughs> So, well, hey, thanks for spending a little time with me today. I certainly appreciate you sharing about a little bit about what's, you know, what you guys have been working on with the conference. I know it's going to be a great one. Yes, and go to the website, aath.org, for more information. We also have a scheduling app that you can have on your phone that actually has descriptions for every single session. So you can look through it, and you'll see exactly uh, what you have to look forward to. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thanks. Hello, laughter and humor enthusiasts. Welcome to Laugh Box, the official podcast of the Association for Applied and Therapeutic Humor. How excited am I today? I get to talk to international, uh, internationally known comedian, uh, movie star, Yakov Smirnoff. Um, you've seen him on stage. You've seen him on television, you know, in interviews. You've seen him. Uh, maybe you caught his show in Branson. Um, awesome. A man trying to change the world with uh, humor and comedy and laughter. Welcome, Yakov. To laugh box. Thank you, thank you. A very cool place to be for a comedian in the laugh box. In the laugh box. Yes. Now I know that you're going to be presenting at our conference. Uh, yes. In, in April, and you'll be sharing yes. a program a new program you have called "Happily Ever Laughter: The Neuroscience of Romantic Relationships." Yes. Where did you first understand or get you know understand where laughter and relationships were a a uh, and laughter was a necessity in relationships. Actually, wherever you were going with the question was more accurate, but I'll answer this one as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, were, you were going, I was going, yes, yes, he got, okay. We're going to the, we're going to the route that everyone else would probably ask. So, um, but the, the first question was more appropriate. The relationship between laughter and um, a relationship. That's, that's probably what caught my eye because um, I have a relationship with my audience. And it took me a while to understand that I've been doing comedy for a very long time. However, as a scientist, um, I'm getting my doctorate degree right now at Pepperdine University in psychology. And prior to that, I went to University of Pennsylvania to get my master's degree. I started researching that correlation, that connection between happiness and laughter. And I recognized that there's a major big gap and big misunderstanding. And that's the one that you were going to ask first and then you switched the mid mid sentence uh your question and and didn't ask that question and i think the answer to that question is where i specifically want to take the audience your audience and the audience at the conference uh it, to explain something that is kind of hidden in the plain view so let me start from William James, who said, we don't laugh because we're happy. We're happy because we laugh. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Okay. And I'll disagree. So... <laughs> <laughs> So we are just both laughing, right? Mm -hmm. And what I'm, what I'm saying that um, laughter happens because we're happy versus laughter makes us happy. Am I, are you, did I lose you? No, I'm, I'm just was thinking about, I was reflecting on what you were saying. Yes, yes. So what I'm saying is that laughter happens split second after our needs are met, mm -hmm. whatever the needs are at that moment. And I started experimenting with this. You know, I said, how can I prove this? Because I know that my audience, every joke that I tell, it has a very specific uh, pattern. It, it's me creating an expectation with the setup, 
and then using the punchline to meet that expectation. And then laughter, if I do it correctly, laughter is a result of that. Would you, are you following me? I am following you, yes. So when I start noticing that in the beginning of the relationship, and I start asking people in my theater, and I perform it like in Branson, I have a theater, so it kind of became my laboratory of laughter. And I start asking them, I said, how many of you remember laughter being part of the honeymoon stage of your relationship? And they all would applaud. And then I would say, would you go on a date if you didn't have laughter on your first date? Uh, would you go on a second date? And silence. Uh -huh. And then I say, how many of you would like to have the same amount or bring back the same amount of laughter that you had during the honeymoon stage? And they all applaud. Uh -huh. So four and a half million people sample, I kind of figure, well, maybe there's something there. If everybody agrees to that. So maybe we're looking at laughter in a, in a traditional way that it's a good thing. But I think laughter takes the, the credit for what it's not. And what it's not, I think it's a receipt, it's not merchandise. What do you mean by that? It's like when you're buying a pair of shoes mm -hmm. and you get a receipt of when you paid for the shoes, mm -hmm. right? Oh, versus the laughter. Price. Laughter is the receipt, and happiness is the merchandise. So, how do you bring that with that? That's a huge sample that you had, you know, four and a half million people over the course yes. of that many years. Yes. What were some of the pieces of advice you gave them to, to bring more of that into the relationship then? It's very clear, and that's what I'm going to cover during that conference. It's very clear. It's to understand the needs of the person. Because what happened, uh, the neuroscience part of this is during the honeymoon stage, we have this amazing um, surge of, of um, hormones that flooding our brain. And there's a lot of wonderful research. Uh, Helen Fisher from Rutgers University, she does um, scanning uh, of the brain and she proves people, shows them what brain and love looks like. And it's, it's a, like a drug deal going on. You know, it should be, it should be busted. You know, we should be like, we shouldn't be driving for sure, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, being in, uh, infatuated, under influence of infatuation. Because what's happening is that dopamine, which is a major, it's like, it's like cocaine. Mm -hmm. It's so powerful. And then oxytocin is another hormone that this floods our brain. And serotonin, all of those wonderful hormones that make us feel good, Mother Nature... Uh, is hosting a happy hour and and you get a lot of it and what those hormones do they help you focus on the other person and once you focus on that person you start to understand what they need and you have one thing in mind especially men that they want to get to a certain place and they will do whatever it takes to get there until they get it and then they start relaxing and not thinking of the needs of the other person <laughs> not me no 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 <laughs> not no anybody <laughs> listening no one who is listening is there no neither am i no 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 it's all oh, those other people in other I, countries yes I, I love how you put that that mother nature is having a happy hour that is a yes. that's a fantastic analogy yeah awesome. That is beautiful. Yeah. So my, my role is to have this party continue by explaining how do we consciously figure out what the other person's needs are and then meeting them. And then laughter comes back to a relationship because it's a result. It's a receipt. That's it. A great way to put that because I in looking at some of the videos that you had online 
and uh -huh. I was I was watching them, and I liked the one that you had. I think that you did it for Pepperdine. It was uh, on there and talking about uh, within relationships, and you gave some of the statistics on um, how much time people you know spend sleeping, how much time people spend yes. you know, working, and that how much time they actually uh, spend being intimate was yes. I said, less than, less than a minute. Or, uh, One minute a day, and and you know it's even worse because I was doing it for PBS, and they're okay. very, yeah, and they were they're sticklers to accuracy because a lot of forgive me if anybody watches PBS, a lot of nerds watch PBS, <laughs> so so they they sit there with a notepad, you know, and they and they check the facts, and so so PBS wanted to be very, uh, they're strict about this. They want to make sure that uh, my jokes are not just jokes, uh -huh. that they actually have accurate information. So uh, this, is the, this information came from uh, U.S. Bureau of Labor. Mm -hmm. So they interview 26,000 American couples every year, and I don't know where they got that particular number, but they asked them what did they do. Um, and so the time that they spend sleeping is similar, time that they spend working is similar, watching TV is similar, but intimacy, the initial information I had was in 2010, and it was one minute a day, and now 2016, or no, it was 2015, it dropped to, to, to a lower number, like a 39 or 40 seconds uh, a day. That is crazy that they spend, yeah. you think about it, the, the amount of time you spend while I think uh, watching TV is so much greater than this time. Yes, spent being yes, and yes. I, and I think for my own life, that it, my parents modeled, a, it, it was much different in my house. My parents, you, you would always catch them, you know, hugging and kissing. Yes. It was a wonderful example to grow up, you know, that kind of household to grow up in, you know, for yes. me personally. Yes, yes, and yes. That, uh, my dad, uh, my mom would always say that uh, the reason she loved being around my dad is that my mom was usually a pretty serious person, but uh -huh. he would always make her laugh. And yeah. She, it was a, a great part of the relationship. And, and my parents did the same thing. And I, when I dissected like a scientist would do, I would go back and realize that when the laughter was happening, if you can film it and then, you know, back it up, you know, rewind it, you will see that at that moment of that laughter, prior to that, the needs of the person was being met. Mm -hmm. And then the humor triggers the laughter. And that's consistent. But if the needs are not met, and I'm sure you've seen that, when you try to crack a joke and and you didn't take out the garbage or whatever, <laughs> and it's not funny, no, right? Not funny at all? No, no, it actually backfires. Yes, it has. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, yes, it has. You know, it's, you know. Things, things are It's hilarious to me, and my wife will say that's not funny. I'm like, no, it really was hilarious. Just no, it's yes. Funny. <laughs> no, but the reason because she wasn't she wasn't laughing at the same thing, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So you say you're currently working on your doctorate in psychology. You must right. Have, that's pretty exciting stuff. Yes, yes, very. It's exciting because there's just so much to research. I mean, studying, you know, it's kind of some sometimes boring. Like this semester, I have. Uh, you know, to learn about statistics and how they're logged in and how do you, you know, uh, do the stats and all of that software that you have to know. And all. that kind of stuff is, you know, but, but the results are wonderful when you, when you know it. Yeah, I hated statistics. Mm -hmm. hated statistics. When I took statistics in grad school, the professor came in and said, this is grad school. Everybody gets an A or a B. And I thought, hmm, I'm going to opt for the B. <laughs> you see what happened? You exactly. just met. You just met my needs. You exactly. just gave you. That's 
that's it. That's what, it's so simple, but because it took a comedian to dissect it, average person will not necessarily do that unless they're shown that it's a really an amazing tool to have in your, in your pocket. It's really great because when you hear the laughter of your partner, you know you're, you're meeting their needs. Well, and I, that's, that's, that's a great gift. It is a great gift. And I'm really looking forward to uh, uh, seeing you at the conference and you know, hearing the things that you're going to be sharing because I know that our members are going to get a lot of value from the things you're going to share. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, I know you're pretty busy, but I appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me so we could, you know, get the word out on you speaking at the conference. So absolutely. Thanks, thanks so much for um, giving me a little bit of time today. My pleasure. And thank you for talking to me and, and playing alone, you know, this, this interesting journey of happiness and laughter. Well, I'm a big fan and I can't, like I said, I was, realistically, I was a little nervous talking to you today. I was like, I don't get nervous. I don't get nervous. I was like, oh, man, I'm talking, I'm talking to a movie star. <laughs> How did I do? Did I, did I scare you or are you okay? Oh, no, it was wonderful. It was a All great right. experience for me. So thanks so much. My pleasure. Thanks. Bye-bye, Jack. Bye. Bye. This is LaughBox, the podcast for laughter and humor professionals. LaughBox is made possible by a grant from the National Speakers Foundation and is brought to you by AATH, the Association for Applied and Therapeutic Humor. Find out more at AATH.org. Be sure to review LaughBox on iTunes. For show notes and more information about today's conversation, visit LaughBox.AATH.org.